Caddis Maximus here. This time this is a Delta high performance server fan uh, reliability video, reliability test results. Now the reason I'm going to make some videos about these high performance fans isn't just these specifically. I've been collecting these fans for about 15 years and always just started out with uh, having computers a long time ago and wanting better fans and going around electronic stores there would always be like old servers and they'd shred them there'd be these boxes of fans and I'd start looking at fans to start seeing some of them pulling quite a bit of current and these are little 2 and 3 eighths or 60 millimeter fans these little guys right here uh, move 50 CFM 50 cubic feet a minute at almost an inch of pressure so this uh, is as strong as your bathroom fan, but is only two and three eighths inches square, and maybe, not maybe, it's a 38 millimeters or one and a half inches thick. These are, you can always tell, and so how I started also collecting fans, you'd see a lot of them, and they'd just be normal looking, kind of like uh, this one here, although, or then you start seeing these ones that have more blades, like this one, which has seven blades, and then it has these uh, counter veins in the back uh, and it got me researching a lot on fans and what I found even recently when I did some more research on you know YouTube is there isn't a ton of information about these there's some videos here and there people talking about high performance server fans or maybe they got a particular model Delta fan and just show it running in a video but there just isn't any videos to compare various brands ABC, NIDAC, NMB, Maniba, uh, Matsushita uh, PAPS, just all these different brands of commercial grade fans, Delta included. And one of the things that led me, uh, I've learned since then, is that Delta, as far as the 12 volt computer or electronics cooling fans, they're basically the industry leaders. They hold the highest number of patents for blade designs and they have a huge variety of fans. Some of these, uh, they have fans that are bigger than this, but are still like computer fans that move hundreds of CFM, two to three hundred cubic feet of air a minute, and little axial tube fans. And so this was a video, there has not been any videos like really fine that really kind of address, well, how good are these fans? How durable are they? This particular fan right here, that this little 8,000 RPM, 50 CFM fan, is rated for 70,000 hours of mean time between failure. That means that on average, this little fan should last eight years, which is pretty incredible. That's under continuous operation, turning it on in the server farm and letting it run for eight years continuously until the bearings fail. Some will fail at five years, some will fail at 10 years, and that's how you get a mean time. So that's just an incredible number, and that was one of the things that really surprised me is how a little fan like this, as long as it's not too humid uh, and gets mainly built up with crud, could be so reliable. So I thought in a real harsh situation like a food service environment, this fan lasted just under a year, maybe 10 months. And uh, that was with grease mist, high humidity, and high dust. So the worst case kind of scenario. I wanted to see how you know good one of these mid-range Delta is. Uh, and later videos, I'll do a video on different brands and then comparing quality of brands together as well as a separate video comparing just all these different blade designs and performance kind of going to go on a bit of a deep dive it may not be my most popular videos uh, but at least I'll be putting up information that I just have not been able to dig up on YouTube about this whole world of little 12 volt fans you know and they come in 24 volt and 48 volt etc but there are literally thousands of different fans if not tens of thousands of different fans out there and how do you really know what on earth to get or even what kind of sets them apart and so since I've been collecting them I have a whole bunch of different styles and a bunch of different brands and be able to provide that information so this is rated at 10 watts continuous although it's 1.2 amp surge so when it starts up it uses almost 15 watts I thought that ought to really test these fans now one of the other nice things a couple nice features about these fans um, is you don't really need, if you're using these, I get them for projects, so I don't use them so much for computers, so I don't need to worry about like the RPM monitor wire. There are four wire fans, which are speed controlled by the computer, and you don't even have to worry about that. If you just plug in the positive and negative on a four wire fan, it will turn on just like any other.
but they have a lot of nice built-in features. Since they are for electric electronics, they are a thermal set fireproof plastic, which means you can hold a lighter to this plastic and it will start bubbling and melting, but it just won't catch fire. It cannot sustain a fire by itself. So as soon as the fire pulls away, uh, it just cools off. You cannot actually get it to catch a flame. So they're fireproof. They have actual, there's, these are DC brushless motors. And these are known as outrunners because the magnets on the outside instead of the coils being on the outside. And they have uh, a sensor in there. So if the rotor is jammed or locked, it will just try to start and it'll stop. And it'll just do that ad infinitum. But it's known as locked rotor protection. That includes, you know, overcurrent protection and uh and uh, overheat protection. Now these little 12 volt fans will work just fine in automotive systems. So they have a variety of uses in uh, uh, for a wide variety of automotive projects. A long time ago I took a couple 250 CF1 ones and a little temperature sensor. I had an old Mitsubishi Eclipse and mounted them to the intercooler which was in the fender and get pretty hot and uh, it, they worked out great. I'm babbling too much. Where's my flashlight here? So this in a food service environment, we can see that this fan is almost is so clogged it's almost completely sealed in where it can't move any air anymore. So it really is a heavy duty fan. And then we start looking inside here, and we can see that all the dust is built up so much on those exit vanes that uh, it, the back side of the actual fan rotor has started to hit the top of the dust, and it just continued to do that for. Uh, who knows, weeks on end until this thing was basically grinding itself apart. We can see all the buildup on the wall, and the blades are actually able just to shave it down. And I thought that's actually a pretty uh, incredible testament to the durability of a little fan, of having it be clogged with dirt, uh, grease and high humidity laden dust until it literally grinds to a halt. And so I thought that was just a good testament, and the good thing for this video is just to show that you know one of these nice delta high performance fans um really will keep running under literally just the harshest conditions and i want to make more definitely more fan videos but let me go in and see if i you can usually pop the rotors out of there so we can really see how bunged up this fan is and actually i believe we can still get it to turn let's do that real fast i'll show you what a normal one sounds and runs like can't have a Delta fan video without running them. You can see it's not too bad. They're rated at 55 dB, uh, one meter, three feet away from the end of the fan. And you always want to be super careful with these fans just because um, there's, they're spinning pretty fast. There's a lot of mass there. And so, and I recommend the guards. You have to be super careful when you don't have the guards. Your fingers get in these fans and and that's a light duty one. I have these little fans that spin at 12,000 RPM and are like little jet engines. I believe that this one will actually still turn on just to give you an idea of how harsh up this fan is. This isn't like an old computer fan which has a couple of dust bunnies in it. This thing would, you know, grind up produce. So to give you an idea, it actually still does run. It just was, you know, it get turned off and jammed up on some piece of crud under there and then wouldn't be able to get started again. You could hear it grind its <laughs> the particles out of there so it could get spinning. So it's just really pretty unbelievable. And uh, much lesser computer fans and little project fans won't even come close to this. And so that's the purpose of the video. You know, if you're going to order these fans, and surprisingly enough, these are still sold, this model here. And uh, they're... 18 basically $20 for one of these little fans and that's the other thing that I got in so into them because some of these fans are just Surprisingly expensive 20 bucks is a lot of money for a little 12 volt fan. So you what are you really getting for it? You are getting something for it. Okay, so let me pause this. I'm gonna pull the rotor out It's really easy you peel up the sticker and there's like a little snap washer and sometimes they're a little fidgety but you just get some you know a couple little picks like this and maybe a little pair of pliers to get it out. Oops, and to quickly show that this is indeed exactly the same as that fan. I don't know why, but... Yep, you can see down in there, there's just a little tiny, tiny little snap ring in there. 
that snap ring happens to be so weak that you can just get two tips of the tools and just literally pull it apart with the two tips and it'll just stretch. Now if we can get this rotor out of here. Oh, what happened? Come on. Get out of there. So somehow it is. Somehow just catching. There we go. This is not wanting to cooperate. All right. There we go. Just a tiniest little bit of that snap ring. So, and there were a couple things I wanted to show about going inside. Is even though they're like little holes in the end of the rotor, you can see better here. Just the way the air, aerodynamics works, you can see that particles simply just did not get inside there. It's surprising that how clogged up this whole thing is, and yet the internal motor is just totally perfect. It looks like not a single particle of dust got in there. And uh, one of the reasons these can be advertised as having such high reliability and actually do is because the bearings, even though they're not rubber sealed or soft sealed, they are shielded. And then just this good design means that they don't uh, get exposed to dirt. And yeah, it only has four coils and there's a little circuit board that turns on and off those coils. It has a little hall effect sensor that senses when the rotor goes around. And then here's our rotor and we can see it's amazing how dirty this rotor is. Another thing we can see is the airfoil design on this particular fan really prevented a buildup on the vanes themselves, uh, which is pretty surprising. Usually you get a lot of buildup there, but, you know, it shows how the dynamics of um, these fan designs can be crazy. It was all just building up down there, and look, it was just grinding itself a cup. Okay, I'm going to end this long kind of babbling video here, but... You know, there isn't, there's just nobody had done this, you know, seen how good the, like a good top rated Delta server fan is. And this is just a lower 1.2 amp. So this would be a mid range of high power server fans and how good they really are. And if you, and using from a variety of, you know, home and do it yourself projects where you might need a fan, these can really be worth it because you install one of them and you pretty much don't have to worry about the fan failing until it gets so clogged, um, that it grinds to a halt. It isn't not getting stuck, actually getting ground, grinding the plastic, grinding itself away. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And I'm going to be trying out some new little corner animations that I do for a, a little subscribe thing. I'm kind of in getting into that. And uh, let me know your comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.